that every time I shot with her, I just had to remember, okay, whatever she did, just don't, just run in the other direction. Um, but also, I remember working with Tim was really interesting because I would ask him for notes and he wouldn't give me any, which made me panic because I need people to, I don't, I don't need it, but it's super helpful to me when people criticize or, or tweet just so that I know and I feel like I'm getting honest answers, but the wonderful thing about Tim and something that I, I learned and, and something that I deeply appreciate is that he trusts whoever he casts completely. And, and he, made, he made it very clear that what, what was important to me was also important to him. He told me that he would be the soundboard for my voice and if I ever felt like I was having a hard time getting something across to other people, that he was there. He would call me to his trailer in the mornings and he would go through the sides and he would say, is there anything in the, the sides that you don't like? All right, we're going to cross them out now and we're going to rewrite something else. Or, you know, we'd be on set and he would ask me, hey, Jenna, how do you want to block this scene? And I would walk around and do what I wanted to do. And then he would ask Guru, hey, did you guys get that? Because that is what we are doing. And that was like a really, really empowering, exciting experience for me. And, and I don't know, I, very, very respectful and overly generous. I don't know another director like that. Yeah, that's that's really rare. It, was there anything like you changed or anything you rewrote that you like followed this instinct and you were like, hell yeah, that was the right decision? Uh, yeah, yeah, there's a couple things like that. They they wanted like a flash mob for Wednesday for the dance, and I thought there's no way in hell that Wednesday is gonna encourage a bunch of people to dance with her and be okay with it. <laughs> that sort of thing. I remember there was a line where like I'm talking about a dress, and she initially was supposed to, she was supposed to say, "Oh my God, I'm freaking out over a dress. I literally hate myself." And I was blown away because that sounded like a room. It was just like a bunch of little things like that where I felt like we were able to avoid a lot of dialogue that in an attempt to make her sound human, it was kind of like every other teenage girl. So a lot of it, there's even like, I think it's the beginning of episode three, I'm kidnapped by this secret society called the Nightshades. And every time that we did a shot, Tim just told me to play and I would say a different line every time. And there's one line that I say where I go, oh, can you believe it? Or I say something sarcastic and... It was all of my castmates' favorite line, which was cool. Oh. Yeah, it was nice. We were all very supportive of each other, but yeah, when you're jumping around and improvising and stuff like that, it, it, it was cool that everyone was willing to play and, and was excited to. I feel like now that I know that, I, thinking of the series more, it's like you, you totally see that and feel that. And there's moments and pockets where you're, you feel like they're so real, so so cool to hear. Um, speaking of the dance scenes, I've, have you mm-hmm. spoken publicly about how you uh, choreographed them? Um, what was that like? Um, really, really stressful <laughs> because I, we, that episode, we were shooting episodes, we shot in blocks, so we'd shoot two episodes at a time and we shot episodes one, two, six, five, three, four, eight, seven. So it was, none, nothing was coherent, nothing was cohesive, and that was like maybe the, the first couple weeks of block three and four. and. I remember that I had told Tim, they had offered me a choreog- choreographer a long, a long time ago, and I told them, oh, no, don't worry, like, I'll do it myself. I know the character, I'll figure it out. And then a week before <laughs> we shot the dance, we, I just got the song, it was Muck by The Cramps, so excited. I love The Cramps. Love the song, great song. Yeah, but I also was doing fencing that week. I had a huge cello piece, I had Vivaldi, the you new know, Four Seasons, the winter. I, um... I remember two days before we shot the dance, Tim came into my trailer during lunch and was like, hey, Jenna, I just want to run things about you, see, like, er, run run things by you and see how you're feeling about the dance. You know, I trust you, like, you're going to be fine. Like, don't you worry about it. I'm sure you've been working on it and have this whole thing (laughs) And I looked at him and I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, totally. Like, and it's true, like, I had been watching a lot of stuff prior because I knew that I was going to have to come up with this dance at some point. So I found, like, archival footage of, kids dancing in clubs in the 80s, and I watched Lean Lovitch music videos, Susan the Banshee's performances, I, um, Denny Levant and Beau Travail at the very end, greatest end scene of all time. But like he took his time with it where he would pause and then do something really violent and then pause and do something really violent. Um, Bob Fosse was like another really big inspiration for me, so I just, I had taken all of this footage that I had seen in my head and then about two nights before I decided, uh, okay, I'm just, I guess I'm just not going to sleep and I'm going to try to like <laughs> pinpoint things and then you, of course you get there on the day and everything is different and there's parts of that dance that just had to, you just kind of had to wing it. So I love like, seeing it on TikTok. <laughs> it's amazing, oh, I've done it. No, yeah. you told me that it was going to be a TikTok thing and I was like, oh, okay, yeah, sure. <laughs> and then it was. And it's really, really <laughs> <laughs> uh, How many people here have done it? Uh, everyone? Yeah, it's, it's 
It's really good. Really good. Uh, was there any like inspiration for your character that you feel like or, you, know, you still embody in your everyday life? I feel like I'm a lot more comfortable with my dark sense of humor. <laughs> it's hard because I, well, kind of like even right now, I, I was just on a talk show, <laughs> and it's like you feel the need to like match people's energy a lot. And I grew up very much a people pleaser, so I kind of had to. I, I feel like a lot of my life or you know a lot of my teenage years so far have been like trying to keep up with everybody and make sure everything was fun and bright and then I, you kind of realize that you don't have to do that all the time and I feel like with Wednesday I feel less of a need to go out of my way to please people and at the end of the day if someone's not gonna understand a joke I tell or maybe thinks I'm mad when I'm not it is what it is I just would hope all I can do is be kind be respectful um, but I'm I I'm not gonna try to do something that I'm not anymore because I'm just tired. Yeah, a lot of young people are obviously resonating with the show. Like, what does that mean to you in terms of you know like how you saw this being re received, and are you surprised by just truly how many people are obsessed with it? The thing about the series is, again, I I was hesitant to do it. I, I know how much he means to a, a really big group of people. And um, yeah, I'm introducing an incredible character, one of the greatest characters ever created to a new generation. And I think that there's a lot of pressure that comes with that. And I think this is the first time I've done a job where I am kind of playing a cartoon. It was the first time that my physicality was completely different. You know, Tim wanted me to blink as few times as possible, and my posture has never been better. And, like, you know, you're walking downstairs but not bouncing. You're just kind of trying to levitate as much as you possibly can. You know, it was like there was a lot of little things that went into it, and it felt so foreign because it wasn't natural for me. You know, no, you don't speak like that. You don't talk like that. I try to switch up my cadence if I could or the tone of my voice, and... I don't know, it, I remember on set just not knowing if what what I was doing was right, and you can just kind of hope, but it's definitely, the project, the, the project that I've stayed up at night thinking about the most, for sure, out of, out of all the rest, I, I, even now to this day, I, I can't sleep at night because I think, oh, I should have done this, or man, why didn't I do that? In first season, you're just discovering the character. Anyone who does TV could tell you, like, you don't know how are you going to make this arc believable? And it's a lot of time to spend with the character. And yeah, this one was really scary. Yeah, I think, I mean, we're all creatives in this room. Like, it usually pushes your art forward and forward and you're that obsessive about it. it. What was it like the last day of set? Were you ready to kind of let go or were you still in it? Was there like a time period where you really had to distance yourself? No, I was ready to let go. <laughs> I had spent enough time. Um, the, the, the thing of, yeah, that job, it was just a lot. I felt like, yeah, it was the cello, archery, fencing, boxing, <laughs> German at some point, yeah, choreog uh, choreographing the dance. I felt like two months in, I was terrified, and I would call my parents in a panic because I was like, I feel like I'm crawling on the floor right now. Like, I didn't know if I had the endurance to go and do that. So I think by the end, I, I remember the, the last scene, it was... Yeah, I actually, it actually, I wasn't the last scene, but I was like the last scene in the middle of the day and all my cast came in and they jumped around me and started dancing and I didn't even want to jump. I was just like, oh my God, I can't believe it's over. It was kind of surreal. And then before I knew it, I was on a flight back home with everyone and yeah, it just felt very strange. Well, it's definitely resonating with a lot of young people and it means so much to people. Have you had like a fan interaction where you're like, whoa, like this is changing your life or this a moment where you like really truly see how much this means to people? I had this, um, I was at like this like Comic Con or whatever, and multiple people fainted, like as the doors opened. <laughs> like they like, like, yeah. It, it's like something like that is terrifying. One, are you okay? But then two, like, you're looking around like, are, it can't be, I, the show hadn't, the show had been out for days. Like, that was really weird, but then also just, uh, I was, I just wrapped up this job in Salt Lake City, and I would go to my trailer at the end of the day, and I would, I would have gifts from people who would, like, stop by the set and were like, hey, we know Jenna likes this gum. Here's this pack of gum, or here's cookies, or here's whatever. Like, people were just giving me free stuff. 
<laughs> and I don't even know them. Like, I ran out to say hi and nobody was there. I feel like, yeah, I don't know. They, yeah, <laughs> like, I don't know. And that just speaks to, like, how much his character means to this younger generation. And it's so interesting thinking about it playing to the nostalgia, but reinventing it, and, like, the pressure you felt to do both. I, I think you did a really amazing job at Great, you know, you watch it and you're just so captivating. It's just one of those things that you're you're so wrapped up in it. So, thank you. It all much. it all paid off in the end. Um, it's something else I really identified with the characters, and I was really struck by, especially you know, thinking about other you know young women characters. Um, is like how independent she is, and I've always wondered like, are you do you find yourself being that independent? Do you identify with that, or was that kind of like a new thing and you have to embody? I naturally am very independent. As soon as I, I travel with my parents for work, of course, while I was a minor, but the day that I turned 18, I was working on the Scream, the set of Scream 5, and my dad was with me, and I woke up the day after my birthday, and his bags were packed and everything was ready. I was like, you have a flight? Like, wow. so great doing business with you. My parents have six kids, so my mom, full-time ear nurse, five to six times a week would drive me back and forth from LA, which is like a three hour drive, six hour total round trip, just so I could have a five minute audition that I wouldn't even get. Meanwhile, she had two, I have two younger siblings, I have older siblings, you know, there was games she was missing, graduations, things like that, that like, I can't, I can't give that back, you know? And like, my entire family made really large sacrifices, so I think for me it was, I'm, I'm very, very appreciative and very, very grateful. I, I don't know how I got so lucky, but it is that as soon as I was able to drive, as soon as I was able to be alone, I took my um, chest piece, so I got my GED, GED earlier so I could book more jobs because I was legal 18 and I could work adult hours, you know, like whatever it was that I could do to kind of try to ease whatever pressure my family had put on, I, I jumped at that. I'm also very stubborn. I don't like asking for help. That's your astrology side. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. I, knew it. <laughs> I, like, you? I don't know what it is. <laughs> That's amazing. I'm also Libra. Um, yeah. Why do you think it's so like? Why do you think there's so few characters like that that are like young and independent like that? I, I still. It's like 2023, and I still was like, oh, this is new. So, as someone who is independent, I am too. I was like. Goodbye at 18, but like, what? Why do you think that is? Um, you know what? You know what? A big part of it is is because I do feel like Hollywood is slowly becoming, you know, it's gradually opening up to diversity, and and that's not even in, in race, but then also gender. I feel though that a lot of people who are established in the industry are from older generations, so a lot of characters that are being written in bigger, more high profile projects are people who come from a different time and have a different understanding of relationships and, and what life is in the new world. And I think that that's why sometimes teen writing can be cringy or, or you know, um, uh, all the relationships are hetero or, you know, uh, young women are shown as damsels in distress rather than, um, you know, the actual superhero or the actual um, protagonist. I feel like I feel like it'll take time, but as long as, something that I really appreciate about, about my generation, and I don't know if it's because social media is such a big thing, but because everyone has such a platform and such a voice, I feel like younger people are making larger steps sooner, which is really exciting because then we're getting into the room and starting conversations. And then whether that's dialogue that they have amongst themselves or dialogue that they do have with those older generations, I think that there's, there's good work to be done. And, yeah, you know, like you said, there's not enough representation of, of young, um, independent, powerful, confident teenagers is a big thing too. Everyone wants them to be insecure and that's something that Wednesday isn't. Um, so I think it's, I'm really glad that she's out there now. Yeah, I, I mm -hmm. agree with the confidence too. It was just so refreshing to see. It. It's still so, so not normal. It's interesting. Um, as someone who's like embedded in Hollywood right now, they do feel like we are moving in a positive direction in terms of representation and you know, even just like portraying complex young women characters, it's still a conversation. Yeah, I feel like I'm, well, I've been doing this for over a decade now, which is really, really weird. But um, yeah, when I was younger, it was, here's what I'll say. When I was younger, it was really hard 
getting jobs because a lot of leading ladies weren't Latina. And when you're a child actor, a lot of the jobs that you do, you're either playing the daughter of someone or a younger version of somebody. And there's just not a lot of opportunity. So it was really weird growing up and not being able to do certain things because of skin tone or just appearance or, you know, it was like really, really frustrating and confusing. And it's been, a, a majority of the jobs that I booked were meant for Caucasian actresses. I just somehow slid in there and things, things worked out. But, what really, really is exciting to me is a lot of the jobs that you see now are, are open ethnicity or are strictly people of color. And I feel like because we also have a lot more people of color behind cameras now, you know, you, directors who are making big moves and, and, and producers, I think that yeah, I think that we are opening up. I still think there's definitely some people in high positions of power who are stuck in their old ways, but they'll die off soon. <laughs> <laughs> What um if you were to like think back at like one moment where you realize like how much this, you know, the representation part of it meant to people, like what's one moment where you really felt your impact? Um Oh, so well when I was when I was going to turn five years five years old, I asked my mom if I could have a, if I could dye my hair blonde, because I really wanted to look like Cinderella, because that was my representation. You know, that was my princess. That's who I wanted to look like. And um, a couple of years ago, I did this Disney show called Elena of Avalor, and she was Disney's first Latina princess. And Disney flew me out to Disney World to, for the opening of the Princess in the Parks, and seeing like young young Latinas running around in little like Elena costumes or my character was Isabel, little Isabel costumes was crazy because also it wasn't just Latinas, it was young girls of all colors. Sorry, whoa. <laughs> but it, it, was, it was really, really strange because that was like such a big deal to me growing up. And for these young girls, it, it, like that wasn't even a question. You know, of course Elena's their favorite or this is why they like her. She was empowering and she was strong, and I feel like that was a moment where I realized, oh, like the work that you do and the representation that is shown, and and Latinos being shown in a positive light is like such a big deal, especially when we take up a majority of audiences. It's kind of insane. That that was a moment that like I still think about to this day, and it's really really surreal to me. Yeah, and uh, you were in my first issue as editor in chief, and all the comments were talking about how much you meant to people, and it was just. I feel like we've never had a star like this, so it continues, and uh, I, yeah, I hope you still feel that. Thanks. All right, well, I feel like that's a beautiful note to end on. Thank you so much. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Can you just stay seated? Thank you. Oh, this is where I awkwardly... <laughs> 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 you all stay there. I don't know where to go. <laughs> Thank you guys very much.